In Israel, cars and their impact on the environment is also a big concern. As in many countries, Israelis see the electric car as the best way to reduce their dependence on oil and cut harmful greenhouse gases. But there is one big hitch. Electric cars need frequent recharging. Enter one group of Israeli entrepreneurs. They've got an ambitious plan to build a vast network of charging stations, hoping it will become the 21st century equivalent of all of those gas stations. World Focus special correspondent Michael Greenspan reports from Israel on how, in a few years, Fill It Up may take on a completely new meaning. The best car in the world. The best car for the world. By now, the idea of an electric car is not nearly as miraculous as it once was. So when you look at this Israeli electric car, you might think, what's the big deal? Well, it turns out the big deal isn't the car, but a system this man has created to keep it and hundreds of thousands of other electric cars running all at the same time and also going greater distances. We're effectively a new kind of uh, mobility company. The first generation of mobility companies were cell phone companies. They sold you minutes on, uh, on a device you talked on. We sell you miles on a device you drive in. Electric cars today, like this test model, can travel just over 100 miles in a full charge. That's why the hybrids you see on the road rely on both an electrical charge and gasoline. But the new car from Better Place, with its unique recharging system, is meant to extend that range. The main goal is to give the user a feeling that he can drive anywhere, any place, with no limitations. So he doesn't feel it's an electric car. Drivers will find a few differences, like this combination GPS and computer, which will be fitted into the car's dashboard. Before beginning the day on a full charge, you punch in your intended destinations. While you're on your way, the system transmits the data to a service center, which calculates your energy requirements. After you pull in to park, you then plug in to charge up. One end of the car, the other end into one of these charge spots. Within two years, the people at Better Place say they're going to have several hundred thousand of these installed throughout Israel on a test basis. And it's here, they say, that the real revolution begins. Based on how long you plan to remain parked and how many other cars are charging their batteries at the same time, the system works out a plan to keep your battery sufficiently charged without overloading the electric grid. It'll even update you on the charge status via text messages. Most charging will occur at night when people are parked at home and electricity is plentiful. If that's the case, asks Bruce Upbin, a writer on energy at Forbes magazine, who needs Better Place's costly infrastructure? If people can recharge at home, you might not need a Better Place because for, for most part, most people don't go more than 20 miles in a, in a given day. and They don't need a vast network of charging stations. But what happens when you want to take a trip beyond battery range and don't have time to recharge? Better Place says its technology will tell you where to stop along the way, in or out of town, to have a robot replace your battery with a fresh one in about the same time it now takes to fill up at the pump. The batteries are free and recyclable. Like at the charge points, you only pay for the electricity you use. After testing this concept in Israel, Better Place plans to do the same in Denmark and Australia. It has already signed deals with those national governments, with the province of Ontario, with the state of Hawaii, and with municipalities in the Bay Area of California. And Better Place boldly claims that if the U.S. government were to fund the project, and if U.S. car manufacturers produced enough electric cars, an electric car system could be up and running across the United States by 2012. Being successful also means that you understand what's coming. Shipping magnate and business tycoon Don Ofer is convinced Better Place will succeed. So convinced, in fact, that though his Israel corporation owns the country's largest oil refinery, it sunk $130 million of seed money into Better Place, an investment, he says, in the future. We are reducing our dependency on oil, and we are reducing CO2 emissions. This is a great thing. Sounds good, but the doubters ask if that's really the case. At least in the U.S., certain parts of the country are very coal intensive, like the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic states. And if you convert the entire fleet uh, to electric-powered cars charging off the grid, off of coal, you're actually going to end up with a worse environment than you would otherwise. The Better Place people dispute that, and they cite another reason for going electric. 
less dependence on oil, much of it Arab oil. Not only for Israel, look at the uh, US uh, economy, we're dependent on oil as a, as a globe. When you see the prices of oil going up and down into such extreme, you really understand that the dependency of oil, not only from as an energy source, but also from a geopolitical and also from an economic perspective, needs to find a solution. Our job uh, in Better Place is to make uh, our solution usable and affordable. And to convince both policy and car makers that instead of bailing out today's failing automotive industry, they should be investing in tomorrow's. The people at Better Place believe they're the ones who know how to go the next step to build the system and infrastructure to make electric cars attractive and practical for drivers. This is Michael Greenspan reporting for World Focus in Israel. Since Michael Greenspan filed that report in February of 2009, Better Place has announced that it intends to build a similar network of charging stations in Denmark and Australia. In Israel, it is expected that 45,000 electric cars will be on the road by 2015.